We welcome you all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. This is our 16th annual Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl kickoff luncheon, and we are delighted to welcome each and every one of you at this holiday season. My name is Scott Murray, and I'm going to be serving as your Master of Ceremonies again this year. It's always a delight to be a part of this because uh, we get a chance to salute those that have kept us all out of harm's way for decades. And we are, yes, please put your hands together. Grant's going to introduce to you many of the, uh, the veterans, men and women alike, who have uh, braved their, their souls, their incredible courage, and represented our country as, as well as they did for umpteen years. I had a chance just a moment ago to meet my longtime friend Don Graves, who was in Iwo Jima back in World War II. My son, yes, put your hands together for Don. And as proud as he was to salute and protect each and every one of us during World War II, he came up to me again today and said, Scott, do you remember at the old ballpark, Arlington, the Rangers game? And I sang the national anthem. I said, it was a highlight in your life, wasn't it? Oh, it was unbelievable, Scott. And I said, no, World War II and all you did was what was all about. So uh, Don and each and every one of you, we thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do right now is ask that you all please stand for the presentation of our colors. Today, to be presented by the Fort Worth Independent School District's Junior College Color Guard, which consists of the U.S. flag, Texas flag, Army flag, Marine, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard flags. The Honor Guard Commander for today is Cadet Sergeant Major Christopher Torres, and the Army Instructor for today is Sergeant Major Frank Filalo. The singing of our national anthem today will be sung by the I.M. Terrell Academy for STEM and Visual and Performing Arts.
ladies and gentlemen, as we move on with our program this afternoon, I'd like to make note and certainly give special thanks to the Fort Worth ISD for today's presentation of the colors in our national anthem. In addition, I might add the following. Fort Worth ISD competed in our third annual Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl art contest in the top three wing designs from elementary, middle school, and high school are on display today as the placemats at your respective tables. We think they did a great job in paying tribute to college football and our armed forces. Would you not agree? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, if I might have your attention, I'd like to introduce to you our distinguished head table. I'm going to start to my far right to your left. Representing the United States Air Force is the commander of the 136th Airlift Wing Naval Air Station, Fort Worth Joint Reserve Base, Colonel Thomas Sulzer. And I'll tell you what, in the interest of time, please hold your applause and we'll give them all one well-deserved collective round of applause when all have been introduced. Representing the United States Army is the commander of the 211th Regional Support Group, Corpus Christi, Texas, Colonel Kelly McNeese. Representing the United States Military Academy, their superintendent, Lieutenant General Darrell Williams. Representing the United States Military Academy, Athletic Director, Boo Corrigan. Representing the United States Military Academy football team, Head Coach Jeff Munkin. Our keynote speaker today, former Dallas Cowboy, five-time Pro Bowler, Jay Novacek. Today's kickoff luncheon, co-sponsored, from Omni Fort Worth Hotel General Manager Larry Off. Today's kickoff luncheon co sponsor from American Airlines Vice President Jim Fox. Our Armed Forces Bowl title sponsor and leader at Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control, Executive Vice President Frank St. John. Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl Executive Director Brant Ringler. Representing the City of Fort Worth, the Mayor of the Great City of Fort Worth, Texas, Betsy Price. Representing the Houston Cougars football program, head coach Major Applewhite. Representing the University of Houston Athletic Department, athletic director Chris Pesman. Representing the University of Houston Regent Gerald McElvey. Representing the United States Coast Guard, commanding officer of Marine Safety Unit Port Arthur, Captain Jacqueline Toomey. And let me make one quick note about the captain. At halftime tomorrow of the ball game, Captain Toomey will be pinned with a meritorious service medal for her leadership and her tactics that resulted in the rescue of over 3,500 persons from the floodwaters of Hurricane Harvey. <laughs> Continuing on, representing the United States Navy is Commander of Tactical Support Wing, Naval Air Station, Fort Worth Joint Reserve Base, Captain Richard Vaccaro, and representing the United States Marine Corps is the Deputy Commander, 14th Marine Regiment, NASJRB. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Stanton Chambers, your distinguished and most honored head table. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, most honored to introduce to you a woman that uh, became mayor of this great city almost eight years ago. This is the 15th largest city in the U.S. of A, and for many of us, proud to call it home. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of our host city, please welcome Betsy Price. Hi. Well, you know, usually I make people say that again if you don't say it properly. In Texas, when someone says howdy, you're supposed to enthusiastically say howdy. So howdy. Howdy. Much better. Welcome to Fort Worth. We're delighted to have you here for our 16th year of the Armed Forces Bowl. That's amazing. And Lockheed Martin has been title sponsor for five years now. And I think they just might have a surprise announcement in a little bit. That's very exciting. You know, it really is a part, Lockheed Martin is a part of the fabric of Fort Worth and the Armed Forces Bowl truly has become a part of the fabric of Fort Worth. This is a community that truly supports and loves our military and the service that each and every one of you have given to us. In fact, I have the pleasure of serving on my council with two distinguished military members. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Council Member, 
of the U.S. Air Force, Jonas Jordan, and my Mayor Pro Tem, Colonel Dennis Shingleton of the Army guys. If Army doesn't win, Council's going to be subject to a long tyrant from Mayor Pro Tem Shingleton. Also, we want to thank Bill Thornton, our Chamber President. I'm a Bill, I'm not sure where he is. There's Bill. He ordered up Chamber of Commerce weather for you today and tomorrow. This time of year, that's quite a feat, as we all know, who have been at the bowl game for some time. I have the honor today of announcing, too, as part of our support for our veterans, Fort Worth has been involved in a challenge for veterans. It's to house 100 veterans in 100 days among the homeless vets. And surprisingly, we have far too many of our veterans who are homeless. And we kicked off that event to house 100 and 100, 100 days ago today. And I'm here to announce that we've officially housed in permanent housing 181 homeless veterans in 100 days. Continue to fight for those who have served us. If you would like to be a part of that, you can go to Vets Home and text to 4144 to donate or to help with supplies that these veterans will need to get your housekeeping set up. This is a wonderful time of the year to showcase and celebrate all the branches of the military. Fort Worth truly appreciates what each and every one of you do, and we're honored to have you with us. To both teams, Good luck. It'll be a great game tomorrow, and we're excited about hosting you. Thank you for being here. Mayor, have a nice little gift here for you. This year, uh, we created uh, a unit patch. We are now the Fighting 817. And since you were one of our original volunteers on our staff, uh, and you have now our commander of the Fighting 817. We thought for sure, and there's the patch, everybody, That's awesome. in the middle there. We thought we'd give you a jacket, put the patch on it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So thank you. Thank you for everything. Now, as you heard the mayor mention, Bill Thornton, Chamber of Commerce here in the great city of Fort Worth. Brian has just given you that jacket. It's supposed to be 66. You talk about the weather being so incredible here in the month of December. Whether it's 96, 66, or 36, we all expect you to be wearing that jacket at the stadium tomorrow. All right. I just want to remind you. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks for all you continue to do for our great city. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on with our invocation. I'd like to Introduce to you U.S. Navy Chaplain Randall Potter, Base Chaplain, Naval Air Station, Fort Worth, Joint Reserve Base for today's invocation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day they utter speech, and night unto night they reveal knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their long line has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. So, Lord, if even the stars at night offer you praise and tell your story, then we must do the same. So we indeed today declare your praise. And just as you receive our praises, Lord, we also know that you hear our requests. So we request your mercy on our game this weekend and on all the participants, including sponsors and players, coaches, referees, fans, bands, and so many more. May the game be played with safety and sportsmanship, and may this Armed Forces Bowl continue to be the great event that it is. And now, Lord, here at our luncheon, we ask your blessing on our meal and offer thanks to all who have labored in its preparation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Chaplain. And thanks to all of you for being here today on behalf of the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl, the entire committee, and certainly the Cougars of Houston, the cadets of West Point, 
We thank you all for being here, and most importantly, to those of you that serve. Enjoy the fellowship at your respective tables, and we'll be back with more of our program right after lunch. Thanks again, everybody. Academy graduate and current commander and division engineer of the Southwestern Division of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, please welcome Brigadier General Paul Owen. The Army and Air Force Exchange Service operates more than 2,700 facilities across the world, and for that matter, now online at shopmyexchange.com. Just a year ago, in 2017, the exchange produced $376 million in earnings, all reinvested into the military community. Joining us here in Fort Worth today is the exchange CEO, Tom Shaw, West Point Class of 1973. He is the former director of the Air National Guard, was a command pilot with over 4,000 hours, many of those in F-16s that were built right here in Fort Worth. Please welcome the chairman of the Armed Forces Insurance, retired Air Force Lieutenant General, Sid Clark. <laughs> Current advisor to Valorous TV, Brigadier General David William, U.S. Army retired, West Point class of 1975. Last but certainly not least, he never played a single down of college football. But he wound up, went on to play 14 seasons of the National Football League and holds the distinction of playing in no less than five Super Bowls, winning three of them. In addition, he did serve our country well, and he's most proud of it. Six years in the Army Reserves, please welcome former Dallas Tech Cowboy, Preston Pearson. attention now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to move on with our program and introduce to you a gentleman that is responsible for probably every single one of us for being here today. Day in and day out, he and his staff work tirelessly to bring this to fruition each and every holiday season. When it comes to the bowl time, we know we're going to hear from the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. And the gentleman that has uh, been calling the shots is the executive director for the last decade. For that matter, someone that's been here since the get-go. Please welcome our dear friend, Mr. Brent Ringler. Scott, thank you, Head Table, for being here with us today. Uh, especially want to thank uh, Captain Toomey. Um, my family was affected by the hurricane as well. My brother-in-law lost everything. Uh, but it's people like you that are helping our friends, uh, or helped our friends down in Houston and the families there. So thank you very much for everything you, that you've done and continue to do. I also want to thank our great partner, American Red Cross, that is with us tonight or today. Uh, for all of our efforts that they do with us and the phenomenal work they also did with Hurricane Harvey. And also, Team Rubicon, which is our Great American Patriot Award recipient tomorrow. If you don't know about Team Rubicon, please look them up. But they are a veteran-based organization with over 70% uh, made up of veterans uh, that are going into areas of disaster relief and take care of families. So thank you uh, for being here, Team Rubicon. Thank you, Jake Wood, and your family for being here. Uh, look forward to honoring you tomorrow uh, at the game. Well, yes, please. Well, that's quite a list of dignitaries that uh, Scott listed off here. And, uh, as great as they are, I'm sure each of them would say they, they wouldn't be in the position they are today if it wasn't for the armed forces members that went before them and created that path for their success. Some of those people are in the room today. We have a soldier who survived Pearl Harbor and can tell you the plane from flying so low, he can see the pilot's teeth. And after surviving that, he was rewarded with the opportunity, opportunity to fight in the Battle of the Bulge. How about joining us today, the B-26 bomber pilot that flew 51 missions in Europe or the Centurion with us that flew 33 bombing missions over Germany while in the U.S. Army Air Force. With us is a Marine who was a flamethrower on Iwo Jima, and another Marine 
that served in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm. There are men here today that drove or were aboard the various landing craft at Okinawa. Some went on, unfortunately, to be POWs in Japan. A naval gunner that served in the Philippines shooting down kamikazes from a destroyer. And of course, we have several helicopter pilots that provide the rhythmic, thumping sound that all Vietnam veterans remember. Well, thanks to a local veteran program called Roll Call, we have these men from the Cold War, Vietnam, Korea, and our greatest generation in World War II with us today. And before you applaud them, please let them stand and hear a few additional words. Gentlemen, Please stand to table 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. Please stand. And hang on. If there are any others that serve in these wars, please stand as well. It's because of people like you we are able to enjoy events like this today and play a game we all love, the game of college football. So on behalf of Lockheed Martin, Armed Forces Bowl, and our grateful nation, thank you for enduring all that you went through, and thank you for providing the freedoms we all enjoy today. Turnout here today, 
And we're all looking forward to hearing from our keynote speaker, Jay Novichak, in just a few minutes. Heard a lot said about the weather today, and uh, I do want to give credit to the Chamber of Commerce, but my wife, Rusty, and I are relocating here from Central Florida, and I'd like to thank you all for the weather. So uh, I hope you'll indulge me in that. I'm honored to be here today representing the nearly 100,000 Lockheed Martin employees who, like you, share great pride in supporting our armed forces. Title sponsorship in the Armed Forces Bowl continues to be a very rewarding experience for Lockheed Martin. We've been part of the Armed Forces Bowl since its beginning, and we've enjoyed the honor of being the title sponsor since 2014. This bowl, played in honor of the Armed Forces of the United States, is the only game in college bowl game history that has hosted all three military academies. Navy twice, Air Force five times, and now this is the third time for Army. Houston has been to this bowl five times, and the winner of tomorrow's game will be our first three-time champion. So coaches, players, staffs, family, fans, thank you for all the hard work and dedication that brought you here today. This Bowl for the Brave is a great opportunity to celebrate the men and women of our armed forces. And while at the same time, we get to watch two outstanding football teams. Speaking of the Brave, we have some heroes with us here today who served in the U.S. Army. Army Chief Warrant Officer Anthony Radatek and Army Sergeant First Class Randy Nance. They are recipients of the 2018 Lockheed Martin Fighting Spirit Scholarship. Now in its third year, the Fighting Spirit Scholarship program provides wounded veterans opportunities to experience sailing, flying, and competitive exercise through three nonprofit organizations, Warrior Sailing, Able Flight, and the Adaptive Training Foundation. Let me show you a brief video that checks in on our scholarship winners from 2017. Can we roll that video, please? Fighting Spirit Scholarship uh, fits to me and my, you know, I fought to stay alive and uh, how it has helped me is just a whole need of continued mission. By receiving the Milwaukee Martin Fighting Spirit Scholarship, I'm very honored to be able to receive it. Being able to come out here and enjoy time on the water and progress in my career and passion of sailing it has really been a, an awesome experience for me. It's freedom. It's freedom of movement because I'm no longer confined to the wheelchair. It's freedom and ability just to be out in the water. This is just one more veteran who wants to say thanks for giving uh, a guy like me a second chance at a new career. Let me take a moment and recognize our 2018 recipients that have joined us here today. Retired Army Chief Warrant Officer Anthony Radatek was paralyzed in a motor vehicle accident in 2004 while training in Alabama. After completing Able Flight's six-week flight school, Radatek will receive a pilot's license and earn his wings during a presentation at the EAA Air Venture Oshkosh Air Show in July of 2019. And retired Army Sergeant First Class Randy Nance was severely injured in Iraq when his Humvee was struck by an explosive device resulting in an amputation below his left leg. Nance will graduate from the Redefine program after participating in a nine-week intensive athletic training program, followed by participation in an adaptive skiing and snowboarding trip to Tahoe. Please join me once again in recognizing these men for their courage and sacrifice. They're right down here.
Gentlemen, we are really looking forward to hosting you and so many of our nation's veterans, active duty service members, reservists, and their families. You've earned our support and thanks, and we're honored to salute you in this way. I mentioned earlier that Lockheed Martin has been supporting this game for 14 years. And today I'm pleased to announce that Lockheed Martin is extending our title sponsorship through 2025. That'll, be, that'll bring us to a total of 12 years as the title partner, and that'll be the longest in the Bulls history. So Houston and Army, good luck tomorrow, be healthy, and let's all get ready for a great game. Thank you. I hope you made note of that solo standing ovation from Brandt when you said another six years. Okay. Just want to make sure you've got that on record. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that have been here in the past, you're well aware of the fact that it is a bold tradition, I guess best put, to share with you what the coaches think about this big game coming up tomorrow. So we're going to introduce to you now the two coaches and get a little thought about uh, what they have up their sleeve come tomorrow. We're going to start with the University of Houston head coach, Major Applewhite. Took the head coaching reins at Houston two years ago and has since guided the Cougars to bowl games in each of his first two years. Very impressive. In 2018, Applewhite's Cougars ranked as high as 17th in the AP Bowl, finished tied for first place in the Americans Athletic Conference's West Division. Houston finished the regular season sixth in the entire nation in offense, ranked fourth in the nation in scoring over 46 points per game. They topped the 40-point plateau in 10 games, almost unheard of, the most by any team in the entire country. Please watch the video screens, ladies and gentlemen. Great staff, 
And you can't have a great staff unless you've got great wives and great spouses at home. So I appreciate it very much. And uh, let's get ready to roll to 30 more. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's talk about the head coach of the university, or I should say the United States Military Academy. Jeff Buckin is now in his fifth season as the head coach. 22nd ranked Army West Point Black Knights. His team back in the Armed Forces Bowl to defend their title. Under the leadership of Coach Munkin, the following are several firsts in the history of football at the Academy. First back-to-back 10-win -back seasons has secured bowl berths in three straight seasons. And Army has also claimed the Commander-in-Chief's trophy in back-to-back -back years for the first time ever. The team's total wins over the past three seasons, more than the Black Knights' previous seven years combined. Army is second in the nation in rushing, nearly 300 yards per game, and have scored 39 touchdowns on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch the video screens. You can't tell them to walk and let other people get them on the walk. You tell them to fight and the fight other people don't want to fight. So don't do that and tell them how to play this game. So they have to go and out play the game. Uh, we've got 
uh, among the many guests that have, uh, have been recognized today. It's incredible to be in a room with men who have served uh, and, 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 and men and women who have served, but these men that stood up uh, that we recognize that served in World War II, just incredible for me. I had a grandfather that served in the Navy in World War II, a great uncle that served in World War II in the Marines, and one that served in the Army. And uh, that is a tremendous source of pride for me and for my family. And uh, to be in your presence is an honor and a privilege for all of us. And uh, I want to say welcome home. Um, we're excited about this game and the opportunity. I, I, I love our team. we got a great bunch of young men. And like so many of the folks that have, have stood up and been honored as, as those that have served, we've got a whole team full of young men who have taken a commitment to serve. And uh, each one of these young men, after they get done playing football and earn a degree from one of the finest academic institutions on the face of the planet, will be commissioned as second lieutenants in the United States Army. And for that, I'm incredibly proud of them and honored to be their coach. Um, we've got our staff, uh, our, our spouses, children, uh, and our team. And I'd ask for everybody that's associated with our organization that's here, please stand. You guys, what an incredible season. And it's uh, uh, your hard work and dedication this year has gotten us this opportunity. So please just stand, uh, everybody. That's players, coaches, staff. Seniors, this is a, a, a team that went two and ten as freshmen, and uh, and then now uh, earned an opportunity to play in the third straight bowl game, and and they have a record of ten and two. So, uh, just an incredible job of, of changing the culture and the expectations in our program, and and hopefully we'll go out and play a great game tomorrow. We've, we've got a uh, a mighty opponent that we're going to face, and. Um, it's just a, an honor to be here and to represent West Point, represent the United States Army, the long gray line, and wear those colors tomorrow in this game that, uh, that honors those that have served. And I don't think there's any more fitting bowl game that we can be a part of than this one here. So thank you so much for being here, and uh, let's have a great game tomorrow. Be Navy. <laughs> Thank you, Coach, very, very much. Uh, thanks to both Houston and the United States Military Academy. We look forward to a great game tomorrow. And last but not least, the gentleman here that we were introduced to earlier by Brandt. And it, it brings back incredible memories, I'm sure, for us all. My son, who's kind of running the AV here, he's my business partner. And we went to Normandy on the 70th anniversary of D-Day four years ago. Most incredible thing I was ever a part of. We put a documentary together, we were very fortunate, we both won an Emmy as a result of it, but it was because of these gentlemen here, whether it's Iwo Jima, World War II, uh, here we're coming up with the 75th anniversary next June 6th of Normandy, Vietnam, it just, it continues to just boggle my mind how they just continue to, to stand for what we all are as a nation. So, one final time, let's thank everybody in here that has served. We appreciate your service. Stars indeed. Well, we've come down to the uh, home stretch right now in a very special time of our program because I'm going to get to introduce to you our keynote speaker, and we're going to do a little conversation here in just a few minutes. I'm going to get up here uh, a gentleman that uh, went to the University of Wyoming when you talk about the collegiate ranks, and then uh, went on to play with the, the, the Cardinals. They were in Phoenix, they were in St. Louis, but then he uh, finally was given the opportunity to join your Dallas Cowboys. And he came to Texas, joined the Dallas Cowboys, was a five time Pro Bowl tight end. Three Super Bowl rings to his credit, and was uh, one of the finest tight ends to ever play in the National Football League. Please welcome, as he comes up here, Jay, I want you to get down here and sit down, and you watch the video screens, the incredible career of Mr. Jay Novacek.
don't listen to you anyway. <laughs> well, welcome, my friend. How you doing? I'm good. You're well, way over there. What do you? Yeah. These chairs sink way down. Yeah. Too, don't they? Well, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. What's your name? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, this is an honor for me and my family. My wife and son are here, and, and it, it it truly is an honor for us. When you see what the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl has become. Uh, it's quite moving. It's most meaningful. There's so many bowl games that we all have uh, grown up with, and it's that time of year to see college football and what have you, and it's always a, a most exciting time to see these young student athletes do their thing before they go on and, and become a part of the real world. But this particular bowl game and all that we've shared with our audience here today, it really is pretty special, isn't it? Oh, it is. You know, I guess the, the, one of the ways I can describe it for myself when you're on the field, it's before the game starts, and they play that national anthem, you know, the flags up there, sometimes those jets go by. There's something about the national anthem then. There's something in myself that that feeling of hearing it on the field before that game starts. It's an incredible feeling. But when you play the national anthem in here, with all these military, with all the vets, but it's completely different. It, it, it brings it all together why, you know, this game is being played and, and, and why we have this unbelievable country that we take for granted 99% I mean, of the time. And as a result of some of the, the men and women and the men that we had a chance to meet earlier, it's because of them that you get a chance to have football. Absolutely, and then, and then you put it together, and you put not only the military, but you put football together. I mean, shoot. <laughs> Ain't nothing better than that now. <laughs> well, let's go back to uh, the days of Wyoming. You've got uh, the United States Military Academy from West Point, New York. You've got the Cougars just down, uh, down the turnpike from Houston. Uh, just your thoughts on what you remember most being in their seat at that time, knowing that you were a part of a very special team, and of course at that time you had no idea whether you are going to be playing in the NFL or not. You wanted to, you were hopeful. But what it was like being a student athlete in the, in the collegiate ranks and, and some of the things that you might share to these fellas before the game tomorrow and for that matter, life thereafter? Well, uh, um, I went to University of Wyoming. We aren't much good. So I've never been in their shoes right now to go get ready to play a bowl game. Right. I mean, we had to play the Air Force Academy, and I met an Air Force Academy guy here, and I called him Zumi, because that's what they are. That's what their snap count was, is Zoom, Zoom, instead of hot, hot. So we called them Zoomies. One Zoom, two Zoom, three yeah. Zooms, and then they get the ball, huh? And then, yeah, they, they ran the wishbone kind of like Wyoming back then. We, we, we ran the wishbone. They kind of made the broken bell, so, you know, it was kind of the same thing. We call that way too much information in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remembering, you know, my senior year, you know, we, we heard about, you know, some of the great people that, the players that are over here that the coach was talking about, you know, the seniors that, that were there when it was two and 10, and now all of a sudden they're 10 and two. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the things that you build upon, and, and it, it doesn't go, you know, just for, those seniors, but anytime you have an opportunity to play in a big game, anytime you have an opportunity to um, to suit up and be part of something that you remember for the rest of your life, that's what's amazing. I'm gonna give right now. I'm gonna give them all both. We'll see who listens to me because whoever listens to me at this point right now will probably win the game. <laughs> Our first Super Bowl. What gets teams beat is mistakes. We never did win a game. The other team lost because they make more mistakes. You know, we get the, the credit for winning these games, but it's actually those teams that make the most mistakes, they're gonna lose the game. And what usually happens is you're so excited, and you're supposed to be, because this is, we're gonna have fun tomorrow. You, you get so excited that you quit the route short or you will um, overrun a play because you're not being disciplined. So all you got is now, what you need to do is you 
Keep that anticipation. Keep, keep that anxiety going. But understand that you have to be able to still do your job and do it at the right timing in order for things to work out, for me, offensively especially. In order for those plays to be done right, you have to make sure you get to be in the right place at the right time. Well, let's go back to 1992. You mentioned the Super Bowl. You win Super Bowls in 92, 93, and again in 95. And the first team in the National Football League, the history of the league to win three Super Bowls in four years. So I just wondered, is, is there something, and you just kind of alluded to that, which you just shared with us, but are there any other things that you might share with these fellas about how football, and being a part of a big game like that, you're in the College Football Hall of Fame, just the whole idea of what this game has done for you as a human being, as a man, and how it's affected you in your life, with your family, with Amy, with your son, with, with, with anybody. What it taught you and what you learned from it that they might take from this, this experience tomorrow and after they graduate, they move forward. You know, I was, I was very blessed and fortunate. My dad coached, and he was a very good football player and basketball, and he, I mean, he did all three sports in college, and, and you know, I, I was able to um, watch that growing up and watching him coach. And you know that was very, very special to me because that's what I wanted to do. That's who I wanted to be is I wanted to be uh, a player. I wanted to either play basketball, football, run track and field, whatever it was. And I was able to get the opportunity you know, to have a, a scholarship to the University of Wyoming. And I ended up running track and field there also and playing football. So when you're sitting down and you, and you look back at all that stuff and you look back at, at what a team does, you know, because I've always get this, I always get off track, so I probably won't answer the question, but I've always asked me, okay, what's more important, the team or the individual? All right, let me have uh, Coach, what is it? Team. Coach, I'm wrong. I always get people on that. You know why? Because the individual is just as important as the team. And the team is just as important as the individual. If you have 11 players out there and they all mess up as an individual, do you win the game? Uh -uh. So the individuals have to go out and perform as an individual. You have to be good. But you can't take the spotlight. The team has to. The team has to be the one that wins. You have to win your individual battles in order for the team to win. So it's 50-50. Do you like that one? Okay. Yeah? Well, we're talking about it. <laughs> now, what was your question? See, I, I, things go in my brain and I just kind of take over and I have no idea what's going on. Greatest accomplishment that you were ever a part of. Uh, I'm sorry. Three Super Bowls. Those are three yeah. Super Bowls. What did you learn most from that experience? I mean, you wear that and bring it around, and the first thing people want to do is, oh gosh, let me see your Super Bowl ring. Can I try it on? I mean, what's what what did you take away from that whole experience that still and forever will be a part of you the rest of your life? First of all, you must not know me very well because I've never worn my Super Bowl rings. Well, you know what I mean. Most oh, of the guys okay. don't, but. You know what? You, you know what I really took away from that was the reason I feel more than anything else. Obviously, we were a very good team. We're very good individuals. We're a very good team, <laughs> and we were very cocky, right? I mean, you, yeah, I, I will yeah. attest to that. I remember it well, covering yeah. you all those years. I mean, she's on blocker next to Michael Irvin. Which is a whole nother story in itself. <laughs> but the good thing about our team was that we didn't realize how good we were. And because of that, we kept working harder. But one thing I, after winning that first Super Bowl, one thing that I realized is we needed, we worked harder this for the second one. You can always better your best, but you have to do it by working at it. And that was one of the things that we continue to do 
is we worked harder than any other team in the NFL. Now, and that's one of the biggest things that, that came away from that. And, you know, as far as all the publicity and all the stupid rings that they give you and stupid stuff like that, we were a family, we were a team. You know, my best friends today are still from that team. My best friends today are still from my college team and my high school team. So those are the guys that you, you do so much with. You know, I, I've always been very, very reluctant. You know, I've always heard these, you know, what's well, gonna be a war out there? And I'm like, uh-uh, ain't no one gonna die. So it ain't not gonna be a war. We have to work together as a team to, to win a game a game that we love to play. And once you get that feeling, once you have that success, that success of winning games with teammates, success that you have to, you have to do your job and you have to help the guy out next to you. If you make that guy, if you make other teammates better, then you are a great player. I've always said, you make it to the Hall of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame, you better have made the guys next to you better in order for you to get that individual award. Good point. Just a couple more questions and we'll wrap this up. I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't ask you, I'm sure there are a lot of Cowboys fans in here. They had a chance to wrap up the NFC East last week, they did not. They got the Buccaneers, a team that's got a losing record, coming up at the stadium tomorrow. Um, you realize the Cowboys have not been to the Super Bowl since you were at the Super Bowl? 1995, that's a long time ago. It's the longest drought the team's ever been a part of. Almost 25 years. So, what are your thoughts on, uh, what are your thoughts on this team? I sucked last week. <laughs> that's why I asked you that question, because I knew you'd give me a Jim number Jim answer. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting beat, okay? We're talking, I mean, college is a little bit more dramatic than it is in the NFL because you don't have that opportunity to, to win two, three, or to lose two or three games if you want to play, if you're gonna be the great teams. If you're a great team, you don't get beat that bad, okay? And you don't get on losing streaks. So we come back right, in this next week, uh, a couple days from now, and we go win that game, things are gonna, all of a sudden, they're gonna forget about this Indianapolis game, okay? I don't know, because they have got to go, you have got to be good, you, have, you can get beat. We got beat when we were playing, we are a pretty doggone good team. But we were in the game when we got beat. And that's the one thing I think that, that players don't realize is you, you got to go out and improve every week. You have got to learn from the stuff that you had last week, whether good or bad, and apply it. And do better this next week. And so, yeah, I'm not worried about how bad they got beat, but... I wasn't real impressed with with the game that they played, that's for sure. It was obvious, I don't know if it was or not. <laughs> First time they get shut out in 15 years, it's a long time. That's, yeah, that, that's, yeah. That game, as, as well as they were playing, and you kind of all start jumping on the back wagon, you know, this is okay, we got a really good team. And, but that game and the last game at Texas Stadium, how they get beat the last game in Texas Stadium, you know? But, man, kind of got off base there, didn't it? <laughs> well, I tell you what, these folks have uh, things to do. They got to get ready for a ball game tomorrow. What's the closing thought you would share with the teams, with the cadets, with the Cougars, with everybody that's here as, as we celebrate this holiday season and, and the big uh, Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl coming up tomorrow at the stadium? What, uh, what's the closing thought you'd like to leave everybody with? You know, I think that. You know, obviously we're all extremely blessed. You know, everyone, everyone in here is blessed. And, and with Lockheed Martin, you know, being that title sponsor, with, with them stepping up and wanting to be involved and, and understanding 
that they that people need to be involved. You know, that it, it's such a blessing uh, for this game. Uh, you know, these teams, the, the players, it's it's something that you'll always remember. It's something that you know, you have a connection with all the other teammates on your team and you know nobody can take that away and embrace that and just and, and go out and you know and have fun and relax. You do those two things, usually things fall into place. Um, it's gonna be great that the stadium's filled up, huh? Isn't that awesome? That's good stuff. That's you know it's all because of the weather. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Collins Football Hall of Famer, Eddie Hellerchamp. Thank you, Jay, very, very, very much. Well, just a couple of closing comments and we'll let you go on your way. First of all, our thanks to uh, today's uh, luncheon sponsors, as we mentioned earlier. American Airlines and the Omni Fort Worth Hotel. Tomorrow's weather report, we've talked a lot about it today. I feel more like a meteorologist than a longtime uh, sportscaster. Sunny, perfect football weather, 66 degrees. Don't get much better than that. Just uh, less than a few days away from uh, Christmas. And finally, just a quick reminder to be in your seats by 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon for the pregame show, followed by the kickoff of the 16th annual Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl between the University of Houston and uh, Army West Point. Last but not least, Jay mentioned it, the coaches mentioned it, Brant mentioned it. Without you, none of us would be here, but we hope you'll do one thing. We've done it today. When you leave here today, there's always gotta be a take home. And I hope the take home is that this has become one of the premier bowl games in the country, but even more importantly, because we get a chance to salute gentlemen like that have joined us here for lunch today. So when you celebrate Christmas with your family and friends, remember those that allow us to enjoy the freedoms that we do every single day because they kept us out of harm's way when the, when the going got really, really tough. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. We'll see you tomorrow at the stadium. Thanks, everybody.